Hi guys, welcome to the video. I have been getting some questions about the brushes that I'm using on the channel and you've seen me using some newer brushes lately and I do have a few new brushes that you haven't seen. I love a good brush and I just think it makes the whole painting experience really enjoyable and there are so many beautiful ones on the market so yeah I thought it was high time to do an updated version of this. So today we are back with uh, a video of favorite brushes and it's another quite a long one so we'll go through the favorite brushes and then uh, at the end we will paint with them so you can kind of see them in action as well. So there's quite a variety I'll show you just the main ones that I really love and you can really just start with one really nice brush um, or maybe like a, a a larger one and then a one for fine detail uh, but I'll show you a few different examples of all my favorite ones and the different kinds of brushes that you can get for me a brush is really an important part of the process so I really like to have a nice brush that works with kind of what you're trying to do and yeah there's the the nice thing about the market at the minute is there's so there's such a variety of brushes out there so you can get ones pretty much in any size or style and for a good price point or you know within your budget so I really like that the first and I want to give you a few tips as well through the video and about brush care and the first one that you can see here is that I lay my brushes flat to dry so on the side there I will let them dry and then I will put them away like that just um, upright so you don't store your brushes um, tip down it will ruin the tips but you can see here I have this um, this is actually like a stoneware sandwich plate but I love using it as a palette and yeah you can mix on it it's actually a really beautiful surface to mix on and so it's from Caron Paris and I will link that below uh, but yeah I really really love this you can see I broke it and then I just uh, fixed it and put some gold in there but um, yeah it's just it's a really a multi-purpose um, kind of a mixing tray but I really love to just lay my brushes flat on there they're always poking off the side of the desk if you saw them in that other clip so I don't um, I don't kind of even leave them there I kind of let the let the actual uh, tip of the brush kind of hang over the side of the desk so that it has enough air to dry it's really important to let the let you know let the brush dry and the bristles go all the way up the ferrule or like the metal part of the brush so we'll talk a little bit about more that more later on I'll, I'll show you as well when I'm dipping my brush I don't dip the whole ferrule because I'm not trying to wet all the way up the um, the brush shaft so Okay, so you can see here I often have several brushes and I'll also have like my favorite mechanical pencil my actual uh, pencil there um, and I'm trying to think what that is, Where is it? the Technalo uh, Karen Dash Technalo and yeah I will just have several kind of things sitting there um, easy to access and yeah able to kind of put them back there to dry so the first thing we're going to do as always is just put a emblem on the page to just decorate the page make it a little bit um, a little bit special as well like you're doing kind of just maybe a swatching page or something but you can add something like this to add an element of elegance and just to uh, create something nice kind of to 
to start that page and to and to make a little bit of a showcase of it so I do have printables in my shop which have a lot of um, tips and kind of these kind of things that you can um, practice and you can trace and and just copy from and that kind of thing as well so you can see there as well I always am dipping my uh, nib pen to rinse that off and then putting that there to dry as well so the first brush this is my favorite type of brush and I love this one ever since I started watercolor this is the Escoda Reserver so we have here the number six in front and the number eight at the back which is a little bit larger I generally like the number six one it works well just for what I'm doing and for you know the size of uh, my pieces and that will also kind of depend on what brush you um, you want to use but you could see there that I'm just putting a little bit of water on the colors and then I'm just going to show you how the brushes perform so this one is just a beautiful one the watercolor glides onto the paper really really beautifully and you can see there when I rinse it off I just am again wetting the tip not the whole like I'm not plunging the uh, whole ferrule the whole metal part into the water just putting the tip in giving it a rinse and then putting it uh, out there to dry I'll also often I'm not sure why I uh, this is the number eight so it's a little larger um, I'm not sure why but I usually have a piece of paper towel here that I will also just blot the brush on before I sit it there but for some reason I didn't have one here so um, yeah the, then I'm showing you here what I normally have been using on the channel lately is kind of a substitute for this Escoda so it's a long handle brush this is a Raphael number 10 it's a pointed filbert and it's basically the same kind of brush it's the same um, style and it paints the same way but I really like it and I'll show you in a minute for the long handle I really enjoy the weight of the handle and yeah I'll show you in a minute you can I can kind of reach my palette but I have here because the Raphael one I think is discontinued I have a couple of other um, styles of this which are exactly the same so they're both Escoda I really love Escoda brushes so in the front we have the so this is just you can see kind of a, I like the weight and I like holding it back and then you can I can reach the palette and things like that but um, so this is my regular one the Raphael which you see a lot on the channel but these two are very very beautiful this is the Escoda versatile so this is the uh, like a vegan version and with the synthetic hair so this is a pointed filbert I'm pretty sure that's what they call it. or a cat's tongue it's a it's a similar um, the same kind of shape and then this one is the Escoda reserver version of the long-handed pointed filbert so I got this one from Jerry's Artarama it's probably my most expensive brush it's quite um, quite expensive but it's a really beautiful brush and so for that reason I don't often I'm not using it as much but um, this one this is just a another Raphael this is a um, just a round pointed one just a tiny one for detail again it's a long handle one and yeah I just really like this for long detail but again I'm sure the Escoda uh, either the Reserva or the Versatile would have a long um, long handle like tiny brushes like this so but you don't necessarily need a long handle brush in watercolor so that's why I always recommend just the these Escoda short handle ones this one here is a travel brush it's the number two I really love their travel travel brushes as well um, yeah they just they just make such a beautiful brush and I think the thing with the Raphael one that I've been using is I found one on Amazon it was actually really cheap for the brush it was only like $26 or something like that so yeah um, brushes brushes can become expensive but if and I think the first brush that I ever got like a really good um, brush was like the Princeton Neptune uh, I found it at 
uh, Michael's on sale and it was like $11 and I thought that was very expensive at that time for a brush. So yeah, just go within your budget and I'm sure there's something there that's really nice. This is an Escoda Versatil and this one is the same as the synthetic one that I just showed you, the long handle one, but this is a short handle uh, brush. So this is a number 20. It's a very large one. And did I mention the, the other ones were a number eight? The other Escoda Versatile and Reserve of the Long Handles were number eight. But um, yeah, I really love this brush. This is one that I use all the time. And you can see that you can get a fairly fine point, um, but you can also cover large areas. And I really like it because I, I like that it's synthetic because it doesn't waste a lot of pigment. So um, the synthetic bristles won't hold as much water and they won't hold as much pigment. So I can still cover a lot of area without wasting and kind of losing a lot of pigment, which I really like about this brush. Okay, so the next brush is also an Escoda Versatil. So I really love these long handle brushes. And um, just I love the Escoda Versatil in general. Uh, these should be more affordable as well. But you can see here, so the Raphael's a number 10. The Versatil is a number 8. Is that right? The Escoda's a number 8. Anyway, you could see the numbers there, hopefully. But uh, this is a flat brush, and it was actually really interesting when I used this one. So I've had this for quite a while, and I never use a flat brush. And I went to kind of use it the same way that I use other brushes. And, you know, my brain's just telling me, use it the same way, kind of use it. And the brush was telling me this is not the way to use me as a brush. <laughs> So it was very interesting. Um, I, I really like the line. I like that you can get a nice firm line there, but the way that I kind of hold the brush is very different. So that could be something that you're looking for in a brush. If you're finding that it's not kind of performing for you, it might be that it's the wrong shape and then you can kind of explore other shapes of brushes. And then sometimes brushes can become more... Um, helpful in what you're trying to create as well so for example this is a fan brush this is the Windsor and Newton what is it Monarch so I actually really love the Monarch series as well if you can get those so this is a long handle number two but you can see how beautifully sorry I just had a little dog walking around so uh yeah you can see like the these are beautiful brushes and then this brush gives you a really nice variety of different kinds of marks particularly for landscapes um, but also for other things you can actually anyway that's a brush we could explore in a whole nother video but this is a really beautiful brush this is a new one to me and this is going to be in my gift guide for this year so these are where is it these are really stunning brushes. So this was my first time trying them. Um, it's the Shimoni Art by Fibonacci. So really, really amazing um, looking brushes. Like I had seen them on the website and there's several more that I would really like to try, like the Mop one and 
the sword one and um, yeah a dagger so, so there's really lovely kind of shapes and styles of brush but the beautiful thing is the way that the wood kind of is marbled and then I was actually really shocked when I tried this brush I actually was quite taken back so the synthetic bristles are not like any brush that I had ever tried and the snap and the kind of spring in them was really really nice and then the point so it's actually this is a number 12 brush so again it it takes um it will cover quite a, a nice amount of area and it's got a really nice point as well so you can do detail so yeah i really recommend their brushes especially like as a gift maybe for christmas or something like that very very beautiful so and all of these brushes i mean definitely these shimani art ones are you know art little artworks in themselves but all of these brushes really are a piece of art so the one that i just showed you there this is a pastel brush i think this is a da vinci pastel or a sennelier pastel but again they're very interesting brushes so i don't really love them for pastels but i do really love them for just using for watercolor in a very different way so yeah i really enjoy those and then this one here is the da vinci travel brush so you can see there that it's different to the escoda ones the escoda have a really nice um long sleek gold case i like the da vinci ones because they're a little bit shorter so they'll fit into some of the cases uh that the other ones won't so yeah but also they just really are a beautiful brush so i have several uh styles uh, what am I saying several sizes and also yeah there are a couple of different styles in it but yeah I really really love the da Vinci travel brushes as well just a really beautiful one uh, one tip that I have for these brushes is when you and I might show you in a minute You can see there that I just left it to dry, but I'll sh I think I show you later on. You kind of want to leave it open a little bit before you close it all the way up um, to let the bristles dry a bit. But so this one is a really interesting brush. This is the Da Vinci liner, and this is a number two. So I have the number eight as well, but I really always prefer the number two. It's very got a very dainty point but you can see here that you can kind of make unusual marks and uh, it's quite nice for dry brushing if you're trying to get imperfect marks and if you're trying to sort of you can see here like it doesn't matter what I do I can't really get the shape of the other um, swatches so yeah but but the the liner brushes are sort of more for detail if you don't want to keep having to dip your brush but you can kind of use them um, for quite a long time because it holds quite a lot of pigment so they're a very very nice and interesting brush and then this one here these are hake brushes so this is goat hair but these are very very inexpensive i think they're under five dollars uh, generally I think you can get different styles that are up around 10 or a little bit more but um, these ones were very inexpensive and they cover a, a large large area so I really love them for that and I also just love the lines that you can get with them um, in unique and different ways again you can see that the swatches that I'm doing there are different um, the shape is different so yeah very very nice again you can see that i'm not plunging the entire brush in but i'm just wetting the bristles and then always leaving it flat to dry uh, because when you turn it upside down the the water will drip down into that wooden handle and it can ruin the wood so it's very important to to let them dry like that and then i'm just showing you here uh, what I was talking about before so the travel brushes so the gold ones the Skoda have a little hole in them to allow the bristles to dry but these ones don't so 
it is important uh, to kind of put it in while it's wet and then let it dry like that before you close it up and sometimes you can't like if you're out in location but when you get home you know you can open them up and I'm just showing you there never leave your um, brush upside down in the water but also when I'm rinsing my brush or when I'm dipping my brush I'm only ever dipping just the first little bit I'm never trying to kind of plunge it in and soak the entire bristles right up the ferrule there I just want a little bit of water or I'm rinsing a little bit of pigment off um, yeah so I think that's a really good tip as well not to waterlog your bristles or too much water can go on you know on the paper and that could be another thing that you're doing so the other thing here is my um, dip pens I really really love these and they are not a brush but they are kind of part of my um, little repertoire of things that I use so um, I will often start or finish a painting using some of the Winsor and Newton gold ink I like to sign my paintings like this so this is kind of my uh, version of like a Rococo love heart so really love this I love that you can make something that's so universal into um, kind of an, an ornate and yeah just a different thing so again just uh, rinsing that off and generally I will dry that with some paper towel and then leaving that to dry as well so yeah the I'll I'll link as well the um the dip pen and everything that I use I love those nibs they're they're my favorite ones so um this is a da Vinci this is actually an ethograph so this is kind of a specialized brush I love this as a mop brush but I also really love this little tool here. So this is called an ethograph and it's kind of like silver point, but rather than having to um, coat the paper and kind of do all this preparation, the metal will actually go on any surface, but you can see it's very, very faint. It's almost like a HB pencil. So this is something that I still, I have wanted to kind of sit down and do, um, something with this for quite a while, quite a while but it's still on my wish list and yeah one day we'll see but uh I'll just show you the mop here I really really love da Vinci mops I love da Vinci brushes in general as well da Vinci and a Skoda will probably be my um two top brushes but again look in your area some things that might be available to you locally you know may not be available here locally so yeah definitely just check out your area and see you know what's available like I have seen some really beautiful brushes online that we can't get here so yeah
So as you can see there, I just wanted to show you that the with the dip pens, you can also go over the top of your watercolors. And what I really like about it is that you, um, you know, you can change the lines of the uh, painting, which makes it really nice. You can see here, like this is also the Kakamori. So I know that a lot of you have this one. And yeah, this is just a beautiful, it's kind of a different style of dip pen. So anything that I'm doing with the dip pen, you can also do with one of these as well. So again, just actually, this is one that you want to really rinse thoroughly because you don't want ink getting into the uh, kind of the inside of the nib there. And also you don't want to leave uh, ink or paint or anything on this for too long. You don't want to let it dry on there or you can also ruin the nib. Uh, but yeah, you can see that it's just a really nice way to add layers onto your painting as well. So there's lots of different ways. That's one of the things that I want you to kind of see as well. There are lots of different tools, brushes and ways to do things. So... Um, yeah I might do something on the channel but there's probably a different way that you can you know get the same kind of effect or achieve a, a very similar thing with different uh, tools so you can see them there all lined up drying so I the last thing we're going to do now I want to paint with some of these brushes and give you some tips about using them in paintings and things like that um, the painting that we're going to do I'll show you a little bit of footage in a minute uh, so you can see the brush storage there this that is a I think I have a video about it and it was from Pottery Barn and yeah it's just a beautiful kind of a lazy Susan uh, like a pencil container or something and I, and I, I actually got it for pencils but I've been really enjoying using it for the brushes uh yeah very very nice but and you can see like all the different kinds of brushes there i do love a good brush but um so what we're going to do is paint something that inspired me this week and i will link the videos related to it uh down below so i got recommended a video maybe two weeks ago and here's my the wool drawer this is very inspiring as well, but um, I'll show you a project we've been working on in one of the upcoming videos. So it's coming along quite nicely, but um, let's see. So we're going to paint this chandelier and this was inspired by a video that was recommended a couple of weeks ago. And it was a video about Robert Keim. So he um, curated these amazing... Uh, interiors for people and I have seen his work over the years and then I was really interested in the videos and in seeing it you can see these like this beautiful tree it's got like rose um, climbing roses growing up it as well and yeah just so this was his wife's property in France and she actually wrote the Meg and Mog books I don't know if you remember them but as a kid I really loved them and I just thought it was really interesting kind of this whole um, little journey that I went on kind of looking through the videos and then um, learning more about Robert Keim and then also his wife and, and kind of knowing that I had already had this uh, connection with her as a kid and really loving looking around this so I will send I'll, I'll put the link below but you can actually go into the 3d tour and kind of look around and i really really love this beautiful chandelier so this is what we're going to paint today and yeah um you can see that i have like taken screenshots of going around that 3d tour and i just thought it would be a really nice tribute so the one of the nice things and you can see here like i love the sketches before they're painted we will do this um this is like a parisian uh building facade so we will do this in like an upcoming video uh but i love kind of the sketches before they're painted as well and 
yeah, what was I saying? It was really nice just hearing about Robert Kyman and, and how he did things. He wasn't swayed by people. He did the things that he liked. He collected pieces that he was inspired by and was able to put them together in a really beautiful way. So, yeah, it was really nice to hear about that. The first thing that we are going to do is just start softly well first of all I'm, I'm putting um, water on the colors that I think I'm going to use so it's an, and I've also pulled out this uh, this palette that's got a lot more sparkles in it um, I feel like I want to kind of add those into the um, the piece not only for the sparkle of the chandelier but for the feeling of the feeling that you get when you walk around there, like when you kind of on this 3D tour, kind of looking around, um, the property is called Laganette and they were calling it in the thing, the sleeping princess, which I think is really lovely. And the effort that they put into restoring the building. I love watching the, like the Renault shows about, you know, renovating chateaus or renovating, um, old stone houses in England and things like that uh, so and then also I kind of wanted to put in a little bit of that feeling of childhood because she does um, she did write the children's books so I want this just to be a very nice um, sparkly piece very fun and kind of captivating in the way that they were talking about his um, Robert Kimes um, personality so and also Helen as well so yeah very it was it's just really nice um, to hear those things and I also thought it was sad to kind of see that these places that they had curated in these homes and all the things they had collected will they'll be they're going to be auctioned off so it, it kind of yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a bittersweet thing. So um, anyway, I just thought this would be a nice way to give tribute to, to them. But So we are beginning very softly as usual with putting in some just light layers and trying to kind of map out the colors that we're going to use. So you can see that I've got that kind of tan color for the... Uh, chandelier arms and a little bit of the Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty for the top of like the sconces and then I'm putting in this sparkly pink for the stripes on the flowers like I think they're ceramic flowers or like porcelain you can see that I am just using the kind of the regular I call it like the regular brush this is the Raphael but it would it would be the Escoda uh, number six reserver. So that is just my kind of go-to brush when I'm starting something, uh, you know, to be able to map in areas that aren't too large like this. And it's just a really beautiful um, kind of easy brush to use. And you can see here that I am using quite a watery wash as well. So the paper that we're using as well and then you can see here like I've I'm damping it off and I'm lifting some color where I want it lifted uh, but the paper that we are using is from a let's see so it's the Stonehenge aqua cold press and it's from an actual pad of papers and they're 12 by 16 inch so I've actually been really enjoying this paper and this size as well. I really usually like the 11 by 15 ish paper. It's quite nice to, to work on. So, yep, we're, we're moving along to kind of putting in the glass parts, like the main frame of the chandelier. And I'm using some of the rose gold from Zandra. And again, I'll put her email below. Um, very beautiful and then I'm pairing it with I think this is called stone ochre from um, the ocean paper paints 
So yeah, it's just a really nice combination. One of the things I like here, and you'll see this in some paintings coming up, is putting the sparkle, not necessarily where you would expect it, but in other places that kind of make those other areas of the painting shine as well. So yeah. You can see here I'm using the liner brush so I am getting quite a lot of paint on here and kind of loading up the brush. Uh, I am putting kind of a mix, the, the mix from the uh, chandelier and I'm going to use this brush to create some of the these longer um, kind of marks on the arms of the chandelier here. So the nice thing about this kind of brush is that you can do these longer passages and it holds so much pigment. So here I've switched to the smaller Escoda Reserva. This is the number two and I am filling in. So some of the darker areas of the, um, the glass here. So you can see that again, we're going from light to darker to darker. So eventually we put on the darkest shades, but you can see that like every little brush stroke, it's very nice to have a brush that can help you create a beautiful line and that's kind of what I'm always looking for um, even if it's just a small area like that making a beautiful shape making a really nice mark so then we are going back in I'm still using this smaller detail brush and we're going back in and putting in some of these darker lines in these kind of leaves curling out and you can see that there we're putting in some darker marks and then I've dipped it, the brush in water once just a little bit to soften the value there so that we can get some um, variation there going in the values and start to create like a little bit of the 3D form. Okay, so the next thing that we do is I've, I've put the yellow in here. You can see I have let that dry and then I'm going back in and just adding and deepening up just portions of that yellow where you kind of want some of the movement and some of the form to start to emerge. 
and yeah then the next thing that I do after this I kind of don't show much more of the process but the next thing that I do is um, I mix up a shadow color to go kind of around the edges and I wasn't sure about this I kind of let it sit there for a couple of days I really did like it with the white background but then I was also I just kept thinking about um, this color so it, this is Daniel Smith Pyrrol orange with uh, purpurite also Daniel Smith and then I this kind of was this was actually quite beautiful but I wanted it a little bit darker so I also added in some Daniel Smith Lunar Violet so you can add in um, you know any oranges purples and sort of dark dark moody colors that you might have like a little bit of black a little bit of a dark brown um, things like that so yeah so I just took this brush you can see and I kind of went around the image there and I'm just doing it in areas because I I don't want the paper to get start drying and get blotchy so I've gone up all this side with all the detail here and then finished that side and then now I'm going up into this corner so I'm also still using pyrrole orange and I'm using a little bit of the creamer pink color so it's a little bit like a potter's pink and I just kind of blended that into more of the deeper colors that we were using on the other side to kind of give this feeling of light coming from one side of the room and then I didn't finish it I just left it like that I was quite enjoying it uh, yeah so let's see I really wish I feel like you the color is not it's kind of not saturated enough and kind of blown out with the um, camera that I'm using but I have a few ideas so hopefully I can fix that fairly soon but yeah you can see here some of the yarns that we have been using in a project this week and what else we found this little bird so it was just sitting outside in the rain we didn't know if it was hurt it had little water droplets all over its tail when we went out you can see those purple berries there so we didn't even know what kind of bird it was we had to look it up it's a, a cat bird and a little a little adolescent one and it had been eating fermented poke berries which we have in the backyard and it was basically drunk so it was just sitting there and um, we made a little box for it but it hopped out but it could only hop a couple of steps and then it would just go to sleep the poor little thing so we popped it back in and yeah it just stayed in there for I don't know 10 12 hours um yeah just having a little a little rest so that was quite nice and then we yeah we had these little visitors as well the other day um but that is about it I am sorry I I wanted to put this video up last week but I've just been so frustrated with trying to figure out the like I just kind of got the sound the you know got a new mic and that's a little bit better and now the lighting and the camera issues so hmm, I don't know I'm working on everything um it is taking a little bit longer than I had hoped but yeah I hope you guys are doing well and let us know as well if you have any if like you guys know of any brands or favorite brushes that you like and kind of why you like them as well because that's always helpful there's always people looking for different things and you might you know be in a region and have um, different opportunities to know about different things so yeah okay I will let you go bye